this episode of Moments with Merv, we're going to talk about computer love. We're going to keep that going. So, we're basically going to talk about online dating. Yes. Why? I don't know. I think it's a good topic. It might be a good topic. Let's let's keep listening. <laughs> so, one thing we should know, because I'm pulling statistics in this one, and our first one that we got is from Brides.com that says... 60% of people have had positive success in relationships, which I, I can I can see that. I mean, and then technically it's not saying that the relationships lasted, but it's saying that people have had positive outcomes or positive, you know, success within the relationships. So that's 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 solid, and which I think is pretty good, considering uh, apparently from her.ie, it takes people on average 16 messages you gotta contact 16 different people to find that one like can you imagine i'm pretty sure a lot of y'all can imagine because some of y'all dms are probably full of hey man what's your name hey girl what you going what you get into hey boy hey big head like some of y'all probably got a lot of that in y'all messages don't even realize it but it takes 16 messages to find that one person like, you know how much time that is? Like, to y'all, to some of y'all, y'all might not think it might not be too too much. Because, like, a lot of us probably got over, like, a 1,000 followers. Even if not, we probably got a lot over 500 followers. So, 16 isn't a lot. But when you think about it, you got to think about, A, you know, messaging them for to begin with. And then, B, trying to keep a conversation going to find that one. That is crazy. And if you also think about it, like... Think about how many of us have, like, preferences that aren't shallow. Like, we all got these preferences in our mental. And a lot of things aren't even from a, uh, a visual standpoint and a physical standpoint. Because a lot of people, you hear a preference, they're like, oh, you want somebody who's skinny. Or, oh, you want somebody with hair. Or, oh, you want somebody with this skin color. Like, no. No. The preference can be like, oh, she go gamble every weekend. I don't want that. I want somebody who puts money in something that's going to accrue such as an investment like that's like we, there's a lot of purposes but again though you don't know that until you go talk to that person so that's a message there but even if you don't message them like some of us actually scout the person before we go speak to them so that means you're on their instagram you're on their facebook for some of you who use that you know on twitter or whatever and you're literally okay like okay what are you talking about uh what what makes sense? Uh, okay, what do they get into? Like, now you're trying to figure out, you know, who they are. And then, and then you make a decision to send a message. Or, for some people, they're just like, oh, well, you know, let's just send mass messages out and see what happens. We call that direct mail marketing. <laughs> but that is a lot. Because then, after you, you know, go through your preferences, like, you really got to filter. Like, okay, what is the likelihood that this person is going to respond to me? And what is the likelihood that this person is even going to be who I think they are? Because a lot of us, like, we get into these conversations with people <clears throat> based off of maybe a post, maybe an appearance, and they're not at all what we were, you know, hoping for. Like, I didn't see somebody have, like, I thought it was a great vibe, great personality. But they suck in conversation. And it wasn't too much better in person. Like, maybe they're one of the people who are only good you know, in through the phone, you can say, as far as I like, posting videos or whatever, or maybe again, like maybe they didn't want to be around, but that is a lot, of, you know, communicating. And another statistic from her dot um, dot ie says that fifty four percent of Americans, you know, in relationships met through online, which again makes some sense. Like some of us actually inadvertently and unintentionally, you know link you can say communicate and connect with people through social media as far as you know maybe a possible relationship and it's not even by you know purpose you can literally just like oh my gosh they post something funny you sl you swiped up on their um your story and maybe they respond to you maybe they liked your message maybe they left you on red maybe y'all had a great conversation and things didn't grow from there like, there's so many different things that can happen, but you don't pay attention to it. You're just literally, maybe you're just literally scrolling on social media. You post them in their comments. They give you heart eyes or something. Or they give you a like or something. And then you post something, they reciprocate. And y'all then going back and forth. And then eventually y'all actually communicate. Like, it makes some sense, especially on Instagram. Because, like, you can just try to be nice 
and you know comment on somebody's post or laugh at somebody's story and y'all don't communicate it or even on facebook where like you know people people don't honestly a lot of people post pictures on there but i don't even be on facebook because yeah <laughs> but like you got more opportunities because like a lot of things are just written just like twitter is like twitter is just nothing but typing so it gives you the opportunity to like communicate with somebody unintentionally as far as going a step further like you can literally just be trying to have a normal conversation or you think somebody's really funny you think they're really pretty you comment and it grows from there which makes a lot of sense but uh the fact that that number is above 50 percent i i feel like people have gotten away from you know trying to talk in person and to me eh, i might be a little scared you know uh especially with some of uh, especially with like some of the people that you that you witness, you can say because like it's, it's it's male and female. Like males are crazy, females are crazy. We're just gonna let that be the truth. You know, some females go a little too far. Some males think too in depth. You know, like <clears throat> you never know who you're connecting with. Which you know it may, it makes some sense where you know people don't want to be face to face with someone because they don't know what to say. Like, when you are through a phone, you know, the worst that can happen, well, actually, this is probably, probably worse, but people can actually, <laughs> they will screenshot you and show you off to their page or their group chat, so you don't want to say the wrong thing. But in person, like, you you really can give a, a terrible vibe, and that could be bad marketing as well. But, you know, when you mess with somebody through DMs and online, like, Nine times out of ten, we don't care. You'll be like, okay, well, if they respond, great. If they don't, well, I'll never have to talk to them again. Or I shouldn't talk to them again. But some of you guys are really weird. Like, don't send her three, four, five, six, seven, eight DMs if she's never responded to you. You want to know why? Because now you're going to get blocked. Or now you're going to get flagged. And now your page is promoted. I mean, no. What's the word? Uh, not promoted is... It's basically flag, but yeah. Now that's weird. But for the um, the majority of us who want to talk to somebody, but don't know how it's going to go, that's basically you're basically just shooting your shot. Where it's like, okay, you know, let me shot in the dark. And I'm gonna say something. If they say something back, great. If they don't, oh well, I will never talk to them again, and I probably will never see them in person. So it doesn't really matter. That makes some sense. But I think a lot of y'all are actual lazy as well, where it's like, oh, I don't want to go out in public and go communicate with somebody. That is so hard. I can have my phone in my hand and go click, click, tick, 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 tick. Especially females, while I'm, the nails and just, it's like that, that clicking sound. Like, the nails look cute, but that sound is so irritating. And especially when they can't, <laughs> for y'all who are watching the YouTube version, you know when they got the phone and they their fingers is like this, they trying to tap. And they can't because the nails is about this long. That's, ugh. Sometimes it's okay. It's not really okay. The tapping sound is irritating. But the thing is, like, some of y'all are just really lazy. Like, y'all don't want to communicate in person no more. And, I, again, I think that goes back to being scared. Because, like, y'all know it's much easier, it's much simpler to sit in the house and just text type and, you know, shoot a shot. Versus going out in public where you might have to get a little dressy look a little decent and actually put some work in to communicate with these people and like to me i mean it's not that one is a little riskier because then you run a risk of people around you you know seeing how you lost your opportunity or how you never had a chance <laughs> but that happens though it happens in the workforce happens in you know trying to acquire a loan or something like that like sometimes you get denied sometimes you can uh you get approved when you talk to somebody in person, you're basically trying to see if you're going to get denied or approved. Things happen. But that shouldn't deter you from, you know, trying to communicate with people. But then also, I feel like, too, it comes from, like, us being busy. Whereas, like, it's hard to really go out sometimes. And you really got to plan a strategy of how you want to meet with somebody. Like, I remember I tried to hook... Um, my brother on one of my other friends. And honestly, to me, I feel like they were, like, perfect. Like, she has she has a solid mind. His head is on straight, kind of, sort of. He be having his little goofy moments. But, yeah, you, you got to meet him. But it's just funny. But he, I, I felt they were great because, like, they were both around the same, they're both around the same age, and they're both in, like, the growing stages of, like, their lives. Because, like, he's in a solid career. 
she has a solid job, <clears throat> and I thought that would have been great timing. However, they both were busy, because, like, he's second shift, and she's first shift. So, like, when she's off ready to chit-chat, he's going into work. He's clocking in. So, like, that didn't work just because of the, you know, the opportunity to not meet up. And that happens when we're busy, so, like, the opera, just talk, being able to talk, you know, through social media and interact online, it's cool. It gives you the opportunity to, you know, still be able to communicate with people. But, mm -hmm, kind of depends, right? Now, something else that I know people are scared about, which is true, I um, found this one off eHarmony, that 53% of people are lying when it comes to online dating. Which, again, makes some sense, because things people commonly lie about is, like, their height, their weight, and what type of job they work or how much money they make. And, yeah, you run into some weirdos. Like, it, again, that, that happens. But I feel like you can run into the same issues in person. Like, you don't know this person. You don't know what they get into. Like, they could literally been on... <laughs> you know, top 10 most wanted. You never know because you didn't watch that show. But they told you that, you know, that they're a stockbroker or they told you that they work at Amazon and that's all you can go off of because you don't know them. So, like, I, that number has been increasing as far as, you know, the, the amount of lying you can say <clears throat> over a course of online dating. But then it's, it's kind of been staggering because you can try to do more research if you're willing to put in that research. And which I got a funny video. You guys should see it. But it's basically about how people, you know, when they get a new DM or new message, they do all this extensive research to find out if this person is exactly who they are. And honestly, I think we, we should because I know it's not me. Like, when you get a message, I know we all, if we already don't know that person, then we immediately click on their profile. We go through their pictures. We go through their posts. We see any other things in their bio. If they got like a YouTube account or a Twitter account or a link tree, like we click all this information before we respond to the DM. And that is a factual thing because we are we're trying to see what they're posting and if it's possibly a lie. And there, again, there's nothing wrong with that because some people, I don't. I don't know if they feel like lying would be better to get the person that they want or if they're just a compulsive liar and they believe their lies so much that they think it's really the truth and that's the only way. But again, with some of these lyings, I, this is how catfishing, you know, continues. And this is something I don't understand how catfishing is, is, is still a thing. Like, there's how many episodes, how many seasons? Come on, man. Like, I know people are at a distance, but... I, I don't think we should still be getting catfish. Like, I, t I tell people personally, like, if I message you and, you know, I was like, hey, let's video chat. Oh, my camera broke. Okay, red flag, number one. You know, ask again. Oh, you know, I, I'm busy. Okay, red flag, number two. The whole time, I'm checking to see if you post a picture of you on your story at all. No? Okay, cool. We're just going to give you the deuces and we're just going to keep it stepping. But some people it's still get catfish. And to me, again, it's dumb. Like, you can do some of the image searching that Neve has showed y'all. Or you can literally, you know, check a phone number the same way he showed y'all. Or you can do a Facebook and a Twitter and an Instagram search. And maybe even a Google search and put their name at something and see what pops up. Like, you got opportunities, but somehow people are still getting catfish. And I mean, again, that comes with the lying. But that comes from you being lazy and not trying to figure out who that person really is. So I think a number that, you know, most people are lying and that the amount of people that's online dating or meeting through online is increasing. But I think it's our fault for not being, you know, doing more, you can say. Basically trying to actually figure out who these people are and maybe even being scared of meeting these people in person or meeting people in person. So those two kind of go hand in hand. And then for, you know, the ending of that part, let's talk about long-term or long-distance, okay? So, me personally, my opinion, I hate long-distance. I don't care what anybody say. I've never been in one that worked out well at all. It's irritating to my score. Oh, my gosh. But some people, they do well in it. But another fact to kind of not back it up, according to the New York Post, as of 2018, um... Apparently, 2.9 million out of 7.3 million relationships 
fail. Fail. Yeah, fail. Like, that's a lot of breaking up to do. Like, <laughs> like can you imagine, like, that, that relationship market is just literally just turning. Like, that is what? Mm, Chunky side got some good numbers. Probably like 40%. 38%, I think it's, it's probably 36, 38% of success. Like, that means a lot of people are getting into relationships and are just not, you know, it's not going. And if you think about it, it makes some sense because, like, a lot of us, like, we like that physical attraction in person. Like, we like to see our people. No, no cap for me, like, I'm cool only seeing my girl once a week, maybe twice a week, because what? That means I can be productive and she can go be productive and she's not in my face all day bothering me. Golly. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. And the thing is, too, like, the further, you know, the longer you guys are apart, the stronger that 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 joy is. Which I think is, like, one of the good things about <clears throat> long distance. Because, like, again, I got tried it, you know, from in the early high school stage and in college. And, like, yeah, like, when you finally see that person, like, your build, you feel stronger. Like, it's just like, ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. But then again, you're kind of like, ah. Uh, what were you doing the whole time period when we weren't together? Like, that's where a lot of people, you know, they got this, that, that mindset. Because it's like, it's like, I can't see you. I don't know what you're doing. And the thing is, too, about a statistic that was saying, like, people, you know, they grow fonder of each other the longer they're apart. Because when they come back together, they're strong. But to me, that's a yes and a kind of. Because the sometimes the longer you are away from somebody, you really feel how it is to be away from somebody and you don't miss it no more. You don't under, you don't, it's not in your mind no more. So it's like, you, you kind of don't care. Like not the sense you don't care, but it's not as important. You can say, <clears throat> and then you begin to grow attached to other people who are around you, who are kind of more there, you know, more consistently, more frequently. And that's unintentional, but that happens because the person who was in the picture, who should be in the picture is not there anymore. And that happens. But, you know, in this, you know, day and age, we kind of got to adapt to the long distance because a lot of us don't live in the same states. Like, especially those of us who, you know, go to college or those of us who get these jobs that literally get you in and out. You know, you can start in Atlanta one week and then now you're in Indianapolis and another year later, now you're in Memphis and then another year later, now you're in Tallahassee. Like, some of these jobs really get you moving around. And that's why some people stay single for that whole reason because they don't have control about where they may be located at in their job. Same with college. Like, some of us just transfer out because we be like, oh, I wanted to go to this state. I hate it there. So then you go to another state. And you hate it there. And then you find somewhere stable, but you're still not with your significant other. So that's something that is, is, is kind of interesting. But, yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it's it's kind of hard to tell whether or not it's good or bad. But some people have had success. Like, another fact from the New York Post. Um, 32% of long-term relationships came from college so or actually or that of current are are from college so that means a lot of people who are stating that they are in long-term relationships are either currently in college or it started from college where they may have you know met in college and one person stayed in new york and the other person stayed in jersey so they're in two different states but they met originally in college so that that makes some sense where a lot of us um you know, meet somebody awesome in college, you get to see who they are, you know, get to be around them, and you like it, you love it, you know, it's something, it's common, but then some of us also bring college relationships in, from high school, and we're going to talk about that on another podcast, <clears throat> when I actually have a guest, because I think that's going to be funny, but we're going to get into that later, but, you know, like, some of us bring in, you know, high school relationships into college, and that's uh, a lot of, a lot of times where things go wrong, because, like, when you're very used to, you know, being together, you, when that person's not around, you kind of are lost a little bit. But, I don't know, it, it, it kind of depends, I guess, on the person. But one other fact that I found that was kind of funny, um, if you didn't know, one in three, so we're talking 33% of people who are in long distance relationships, they broke up within two to three months after, like, living together. And you want to know why? Because they're not used to being around each other. So it's like, you get to see other people's routine. And I, I guarantee you, some of them were probably messy. And if you got one person who's a little OCD and, you know, is a clean freak, it's, it's not going to last. It's not going. So that's something that I, I found that was kind of interesting. And the, the big reason was because a lot of them don't have a plan 
A to move in and what they're going to do once they move in. Like, they don't have any growth plans. Like, as soon as we move in, we're going to do this, that, and the other. Like, it's kind of like somebody moves in and then what? And that, that, that's really it. But the thing is, like, you don't have that 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 strong bond that I miss you, I love you, because you see this person every day. You wake up with this person. You go to sleep with this person. Like, it's not the same when it's like you stand on the phone all night and you hang up. But when you wake up, you know, you're back in your normal routine. Y'all may not talk until later on at night when y'all both are able to, you know, communicate. But I just think that's kind of interesting. And, I mean, it kind of makes sense because, like, a lot of people don't have, like, a long-term plan once they actually get from long-term distance or long distance. Like, they get together and then it's like, okay, uh, what do we do? I love you. Like, that's it. They don't, they don't have, like, a, a longer, you know, game plan and mindset. So, the, the fact that only, <clears throat> or the fact that 33% of people break up, I mean, it kind of makes sense because, like, some people don't look further into the future. But, we're going we're gonna to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. So, let's wrap it all up. Um, online dating. It has been increasing. Uh, more than 50% of people utilize it. It is a good tool if you use it correctly, but don't let it deter you from talking to people in person. Make sure, if you're all talking to somebody online, that you know who they are and that they are really who they say they are. Also, I don't care if it's second day, third day, you try to figure out how to get them on video. Like, whether you FaceTime them or you Zoom with them or you watch their story, you have them going on IG Live, you figure out how to see their face and make sure they're real. This catfish and stuff, y'all better let it stop. This is, this is not okay. We are too grown for this. All right? Sounds good. And then long, long distance, like... If you're going to do it, just have a great plan. That's all I'm going to say. Have a plan for when y'all come together.